Hello and welcome to the Locked On Cardinals podcast. It is Monday, August the 16th. This is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. I am the St. Louis Cardinals mega fan, your host for the show, Lucas Smith. Thanks for tuning in, whether you're on your favorite podcasting platform or you're right here on the YouTube channel. Uh, Glad that you're joining me on this Monday, and it is an exciting time to be a Cardinal fan as the Cardinals sit just four and a half games out of a playoff spot, just one team between them and the San Diego Padres. So on the show today, we are breaking down the playoffs because the playoffs might be a real opportunity. So we're going an optimistic view and a pessimistic view at what the playoffs might look like. We're going down, breaking over all the options on today's Locked On Cardinals. It's going to be a good one, so stay tuned for more Locked On Cardinals. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Once again, welcome into Locked on Cardinals. I'm Lucas Smith. We're brought to you today in part by Locked on MLB. Be sure to join Locked on MLB host Paul Francis Sullivan, but call him Sully for a unique look at the majors, both past and present every day on Locked on MLB. And Locked on MLB is also on YouTube, so be sure to hit hit him up on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button here on the YouTube channel or subscribe or follow on your favorite podcasting platform, and be sure to drop a like, rating, hit the notifications button, whatever you need to stay locked on Cardinals. So, very exciting show today as the Cardinals somehow, someway, find themselves at least a little bit in the playoff hunt here on August 16th, which is not something that I think many Cardinal fans saw coming. And again, we have to... To, to keep in mind, I'll get to this when I talk about the pessimistic point of the playoffs as to who the Cardinals are playing. Because yes, they're eight and two. They're, they're in their last ten. They're nine and four in their last thirteen and on a six-game winning streak. But they have been beating the Pirates and the Royals after getting swept before that by the Atlanta Braves. They did beat the Twins in the series beforehand. So they haven't exactly been playing a gauntlet of teams. Uh, the Braves are first place in the National League East, so I should give credit to where credit is due there. But nevertheless. Still some things to be desired in terms of who the Cardinals are beating. But again, that's all for the pessimistic opportunity to playoffs. Let's take a look now at the positive and the uh, optimistic point of view for the Cardinals playoff push. Because, again, there are definitely some things to worry about. We're going to start positive because I love starting positive. Even on Cardinal losses, I try and start positive. So we're going to start positive here as well. First of all, let's take a look at the remaining schedule just for the for the remainder of, of this month at here in August. And I'll get to the series recap and talk about that. Through. The series recap will come in segment three, and I'll talk about the series and individual performances throughout the um, throughout the, the show today. But let's take a look at it. Because outside of this three-game set against the Milwaukee Brewers that the Cardinals have coming up Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the Cardinals have the Pirates at home for three, the Tigers at home for two, the Pirates at PNC Park for four, and then the Reds at Cincinnati for two. So again, you go from the Brewers to the Tigers, or sorry, from the Pirate to the Bru- to the Tig, excuse me, from the Pirates to the Tigers, back to the Pirates. You're thinking to yourself, okay, that's not a bad schedule at all. Cardinals have a really good opportunity here to take advantage of it because we've talked about this before. I get that, but the Cardinals are playing such an exciting brand of baseball right now. Mike Schilt is pushing all the right buttons that he can right now on this six-game winning streak. Hard to push too many wrong buttons when you have so many guys performing at a top-notch level. T.J. McFarland has looked extra sharp out of the bullpen. Uh, Luis Garcia has looked extremely sharp out of the bullpen. Alex Reyes, Giovanni Gallegos, and Hennessy Cabrera have had their bumps but still look extremely sharp overall. You've got a lot of things clicking right now for the St. Louis Cardinals. And if you know me, if you're a longtime listener or even a recent listener, you've still probably already heard me say this. Baseball is a big-time momentum game. I think that momentum plays a huge role both within an individual game as well as within a season. And right now, the Cardinals have a lot of momentum on their side. 
the, the opponent, let, let's just put the, who the Cardinals are playing off to the side for just a moment. We're going to put, we're going to put them over here. We'll talk about them in just a moment, but the Cardinals have been playing a better brand of baseball. They're winning in convincing fashion. They won seven to two or, or excuse me, nine to nine to no, a seven to two on Sunday, convincing fashion, good performances from O'Neill, Arenado, even Jose Rondon got in on the action. And when this team is playing this kind of brand of baseball, it's so much more fun to watch because June was atrocious. July got a little bit better. We're starting to see really fun and exciting baseball here in August. So point number one on the optimistic part, like it says right there on the caption, if you're watching on YouTube, Cardinals are on a roll. They can ride the momentum out because momentum can play a huge factor. And yes, there's some daunting things ahead for this Brewer series. But momentum right now, the Cardinals have a grasp of it. The Cardinals are 100% in the driver's seat. Everything is clicking right now for the St. Louis Cardinals. And that really, the, the, the big part that I want to talk about with what is clicking and rolling is Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado. Goldenado, the, the, two, the two corner infielders, something that the Cardinals have not seen throughout the season, is both of the guys on a roll at the same time. And we are finally starting to see that. Paul Goldschmidt has really been on a roll since since May, especially his last 30 games, he's hitting above 300, slugging over 500. But let's just take a look at the last two weeks because that's really when the Cardinals, like I said, 9-4 and four, um, in their 13 games this month, just over two-week span there. So let's take a look at those last 15 games, just over two weeks. He's got a slash line of 316, 373, 421. Just one home run, but he has driven in 13. He's drawn seven walks, 18 hits, like I mentioned, setting the tone, and he's usually hitting second or third. Those are very solid numbers, and Paul Goldschmidt got off to a really bad start, as he traditionally does. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary, but he has really picked it up, especially, like I said, 316 in his last 15 games. You go in his last seven games, didn't 357. And then you go to Nolan Arenado, who's always going to hit behind him. Nolan is red hot. Three home runs in his last seven games. He got three home runs in a row against Kansas City, and they were all absolute lasers. And we all thought he had a home run watching the Bally Sports uh, broadcast, but nevertheless, it ended up being a ground roll double conversation another time. Too long, didn't read. Send the broadcasters to the ballparks. That's all I'm going to say right now. But no one's on fire. So when you have Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado on fire, that bodes well for any offense, whether it's an all-star offense, a mediocre offense, a bad offense, a good offense. These two guys are probably going to be two of the best players in any offense they're playing on, especially at this point in their careers starting to, to near the end of their prime, but still in that prime area. So Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt being on fire at the same time is huge. It lengthens this lineup so much, especially when you have Tommy Eben doing pretty solid things at a leadoff position because then he's getting on base, Goldschmidt's hitting extra base hits, Nolan's driving him home, O'Neal is struggling, he's two for his last 23, but those two hits are home runs, and he's drawn three walks in the last three games. Something we have not seen from Tyler O'Neill in his career is the ability to draw walks. He's doing that this year. So even when he's struggling, he's at least finding ways to get on base. His on-base percentage is a whopping 341. And I think if you would have said that before this season, nobody would have believed you. That is 30 points above his career high. So the Cardinals are on a roll offensively. They've got Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado on it. Dylan Carlson was doing well before his wrist injury. Edmund starting to find it a little bit as well. Things are rolling. You've got Amundo Sosa getting two, three hit nights every night. Jose Rondon, like I mentioned. Let's go to the pitching staff now. Let, let's just take a, a trip down memory lane as to what happened to the Cardinal pitching staff, their most their, their last turn through the rotation. Against Pittsburgh Pirates, J.A. Happ, one run, a one hit outing in six innings. Adam Wainwright, a 88 pitch, two hit shutout against the Pittsburgh Pirates. He had the way the block mess up in there, he got hurt. You go to the Kansas City Royals, a shutout performance by Mr. Jack Flaherty in his return. And I will talk about Jack Flaherty in just a moment, um, in, in, or excuse me, in a little while. And then you had a solid performance from John Lester on Saturday, and then another solid performance from J.A. Happ yesterday against the Kansas City Royals. That is a turn through the rotation plus one when you have nothing but solid outings from everybody except for Wade LeBlanc, and that's really only because he had to leave due to injury. This team is on a roll on both sides of the baseball, offense, defense, pitching. So all three aspects of the game, the Cardinals are riding high. That's why if you're going to take an optimistic view, which I'm taking right now in this segment, the Cardinals are a legitimate playoff contender right now. I'm not trying to say, even on a, even being optimistic right now, I'm not saying the Cardinals can, can even beat the Dodgers if they were to get to that one-game playoff, or that they're even a threat to anybody in the postseason. I'm just talking about making a playoff push. 
Cardinals right now, when you're trying to be optimistic about this team, there are a lot of things to be optimistic about. Goldschmidt, Arenado on a roll, starting pitching on a roll. Because I've said this many, many a times, when this team pitches, they win, and they are pitching and they're hitting, and that's when this team is truly deadly. So that's the optimistic viewpoint. Cardinals are on a roll. They can keep the offense of momentum going and go on from there. That's the plus, that's the plus side. Now, the Cardinals do have a big test against Milwaukee this week. That is a part of the negative side and the pessimistic view on postseason chances that I will take a look at after this short break. But first, I want to tell you about Stat Hero. It is the first ever daily fantasy sports book that puts the player in control and winning within reach. I just talked about the Cardinals being within winning reach. Stat Hero allows you to be within winning reach as well. And here's how it works. Stat Hero shows you their lineup and dares you to beat them. It's you versus the house in head-to-head fantasy matchup. You name your stakes, winner take all. You have the advantage. Stat Hero is showing you their lineups ahead of time. Nobody else does that. You are in total control. Stat Hero is DFS the way it was meant to be, one-on-one, mano y mano. So play Stat Hero now and change the odds and start winning in fantasy sports. Go to stathero.com. Com slash locked on. Sign up for free right now. You can still listen to this while you sign up. You can get three times back on your first play. They're giving you a 300% match. Unheard of. Go to stathero.com slash locked on. One more time. That is stathero.com slash locked on. Optimism is a wonderful thing. It's time to be. I, t- I say pessimistic, but it's really being a little bit more of a realistic view at the Cardinals' chances of playoff push. Because like I said, trying to, at the tail end of the optimistic viewpoint, even you could be as optimistic as you want, as positive as you want, I still don't think there are too many people out there that think that this is a legit World Series team at this point. Still think they're a starter short. Still think they're a couple bullpen pieces short. And you can pick and choose a spot where you think that the Cardinals might be a bat short, including a bench bat. But let's take a look at it and see why the Cardinals won't be making the playoffs this year. Again, a little bit more of a pessimistic viewpoint. The Cardinals have three games against the Brewers this week. But for this start, looking at the schedule, we're going to look at the schedule in September. Cardinals start off with a game at Cincinnati. And they've got three at Milwaukee, four at home against the Dodgers, three against the Reds, three at the New York Mets, three at the Padres, four at the Milwaukee Brewers four against the Cubs, and they finish up with three at Milwaukee. That is a daunting September schedule. Because even the Mets, who are not in a playoff spot at the moment because they just fell out, they are a game above 500. They are just two and a half back of the Atlanta Braves for first place in the New in the NL East. excuse me. So they are, can still be a, a postseason threat. They still have their eyes on the postseason despite just falling flat on their face in the second half of the season. So... Well, we're going to count them as a postseason threat. We're also going to count the Reds as a postseason threat since they're in between the Cardinals and the Padres. That means the Cardinals only play one non-postseason threat team, and that is the Chicago Cubs. Four times, the 24th twice, the 25th, and the 26th in September. Other than that, September is full of possible playoff teams slash guaranteed playoff teams. Milwaukee's making the playoffs. LA is making the playoffs. No question about that in my mind. Padres have been falling off the table. However, they did get El Nino back. So that bodes well for them going down the stretch. But this Cardinal team is going to be playing above 500 teams. And those are the kind of games they have not fared well on. They are just 20 and 32 against teams with an above 500 record, according to MLB.com. Cardinals were also 29 and 31 on the road. And they play Milwaukee. They had the home game series this week against the Brewers. Then they play the Brewers seven times on the road. So you got on the road, plus you've got a team above 500. Stats have, show, have showed you this season that does not bode well for the St. Louis Cardinals. So that in and of itself is daunting for, for, for a Cardinal fan to think about, ooh, is this team actually a playoff team? Because the Cardinals really have not been tested with a playoff team since Atlanta. That was two weeks ago. Going to be two weeks ago tomorrow, I guess I should say. And they got swept at home against the Atlanta Braves, losing 6-1, to 7-4, to four, and 8-4. to four. So that's why this Brewers series is going to be a big test for me for the St. Louis Cardinals. And also, I don't know if you remember the last time the Cardinals played the Tigers twice and then the Pittsburgh Pirates four times. 
but they got sp swept by the Tigers in that two game series and then proceeded to lose three out of four to the Pirates at home. So, yes, they are playing much better baseball now than they were the last time they played that part of their that portion of their schedule. But still, if history doesn't repeat itself, it very could well rhyme and it could well rhyme with the Cardinals losing against the Tigers and Pirates playing to their level of competition. And again, just an asterisk on all this. This is taking a pessimistic view for the Cardinals playoff chances. What else is a pessimistic outlook? Yes, you've got Jack Flaherty back, but you still have a large cast of the same players. The offense has not changed. Yes, Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Otto are on fire. Carlson was, was heating up before he got hurt. Tommy Emma is doing good things. But Harrison Bader, yes, he is going, he is an elite defender, in, in my opinion, even when you are taking a pessimistic viewpoint on him. But he has struggled since his extremely hot June. He's seven for his last 27, 11 strikeouts in that span. You take that back further, he's just 12 for his last 56. And August has been a lot less kind to him than – than, than July was because in July he slashed 357, 402, 619 was his slugging percentage for an OPS of 1021. And then here in the month of August, 204, 278, 204. That's right, does not have an extra base hit in the month of August and an OPS of 482. Harrison Bader came back and this team started to turn it around. They're still playing well as he has struggled, but Harrison Bader has really been unable to show us that once he starts struggling, it takes him a long time to get out of it at times. So if you're going to take a pessimistic view at a playoff chance, you've got to look at Harrison Bader and saying, ooh, what has he shown you that, that he can break out of this slump? Because if he doesn't break out of this slump, then it's going to be a hard time thinking to yourself that this team can make a playoff run because that's one of your three outfielders really not doing anything for the rest of the season. Again, a pessimistic viewpoint. And when I say that a large same cast of characters, I know that the bullpen has changed. You've got TJ McFarlane doing good things. You've got Luis Garcia doing good things. But again, the long track record of these guys doesn't show long-term success. So you got to wonder, is this luck? Is it going to run out? Or is this actually TJ McFarlane, Luis Garcia, Justin Miller, Andrew Miller doing good things for the long haul? Ryan Helsley has also turned it around. Somebody I didn't really talk about in the optimism part of this podcast, which I probably should have because he has done exceptionally well in the last number of appearances for him. But what if he starts to struggle again? Again, this is all what if, but the, the big key to me in, in all of this, well, no matter what viewpoint you talk about, I'll talk, I'll expand on this in, in, in segment number three is this weekend, th this week's series against the Milwaukee Brewers is going to be a big test for the St. Louis Cardinals. It might not decide the Central. The Central is probably already decided to the Milwaukee Brewers. But it will show us, it will help us fully evaluate this St. Louis Cardinals team and really what they can actually bring, bring to the table. Is this a playoff team push? Is this a team that can make a playoff push? Excuse me. Or is this just a team that's hot against bad teams? We have yet to see because I think that since the Cardinals, yes, they, they played the Braves but got swept by the Braves. Since the Cardinals have not had too much success against playoff teams recently, we're going to have to wait and see what the Cardinals do against the Brewers. And I'm not trying to be too pe pessimistic, but also you have to be a realist and look at this Cardinal team and say, okay, they've taken care of business against the Pirates and Royals. That's what they should have done. That's what playoff teams do. Playoff teams beat teams like the Pirates and Royals. They beat them handedly like the Cardinals did. They pitched well. They played defense well, both in the infield and in the outfield, and they hit the ball well. Success, credit to where credit is due, solid job there. But there's always that what if, and you've got to play the games for a reason, both in a positive outlook and in a negative outlook. The negative outlook, there are a lot of positives you can draw and a lot of negatives. That's why I'm doing this kind of one-segment, two-segment thing where you've got to look at both sides of the coin. You can give credit to where credit is due and be happy for the team and, and their success while also being critical and saying, okay, you, you got to show me some more because you got to show me against quality opponents. You got to show me against a quality opponent in the Milwaukee Brewers. And the Milwaukee Brewers are bringing their A game. They've got their three aces. They've got Burns, Woodruff, and Peralta uh, going to the exact order a little bit in segment number three. But they have got their 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 three-headed horsemen. They're, 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 they're big three going against St. Louis Cardinals this weekend. Luckily, the Cardinals have Flaherty, Wainwright, and most likely Miles Michaelis or John Lester going for them. Three solid starters that you can't really complain about too much, especially the first two. However, once again, to finish up the pessimistic portion of the podcast and taking a negative look, the Cardinals have beat up on bad teams recently. That's great. 
got to show the Cardinals have to show the doubters more. That's really what it comes down to. You got to show the doubters that they can beat the good teams. They can beat a tough team and, or at least be comparable and play to their level. That's all. That's all the Cardinals will be looking for. That said, taking away the pessimistic viewpoint, the Cardinals have been playing some great baseball. They played great baseball over the weekend, and I really want to talk about it. However, with the playoffs being somewhat within reach now, I had to talk about that first. Segment three, we're talking Jack Flaherty. We're talking John Lester. We're talking J.A. Happ. We're talking Nolan. We're talking Paul Goldschmidt. We're talking all the things that happened this weekend against the Kansas City Royals coming up after this short break. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the market, and I am not making that up. Built Bar has nine delicious flavors, and we are passionate about our favorites. My favorite is double chocolate. All these flavors I'm about to mention are covered 100% in chocolate. Coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, salted caramel, strawberry, orange cookies and cream, German chocolate, and my favorite, as I mentioned, the double chocolate. If you haven't tried all the flavors, that's okay. Head over to Built.com and get yourself a mix box. you will get two of each of the nine flavors. Like I said, they're all covered in chocolate, so of course they're all tasty. That doesn't mean they're not healthy. They've got 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, only 4 to 5 grams of sugar, 4 to 5 grams of net carbs, amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. So what are you waiting for? Order today, order right now. Get yourself a double chocolate, a cookies and cream, a raspberry, whatever you'd like. Built Bar is also the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. That's pretty neat if you ask me. So go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. One more time, that is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Go to all the latest news, odds, and info for all your sporting needs, including MLB, NBA, NHL, and all of your UFC, MMA action. So before the next pitch, and you've got time, because the Cardinals don't play tonight, they play Tuesday. So you've got plenty of time to check out all the good things at Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, as this is your chance to get into the game as teams, like the Cardinals, prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to the website, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device today to sign up and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's right, you can get a 50% welcome bonus with the promo code LOCKED ON. L O C K E D O N. Get you a 50% welcome bonus. Ain't nothing better than that than free money. So bet online, get your 50% welcome bonus. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Cardinals played extremely well this weekend against the Kansas City Royals. We're going to start with Friday the 13th. I talked about it all day on Friday's episode, or for at least most of it. Jack Flaherty's returned, and he returned with glorious. He goes six shutout, dominant innings with two hits. He struck out five against the Kansas City Royals, and he looked sharp, picking up his ninth win of the season. Jack Flaherty talked about it. I talked about it on Friday. His one, he being one player, isn't going to necessarily be the difference maker. But boy, oh boy, is it nice to have the ace back. Adam Wainwright has been a very, very solid ace for this this team this season winning 11 games having a career low era since 2014 excluding 2020 and 2015 when he made seven starts in 15 and a COVID shortened season last year at one point being the second most innings pitched in major league baseball 39 years old i'm not trying to take anything away from adam wainwright but when jack flaherty is on this team when jack flaherty is healthy jack flaherty is the ace of this team and any team that gets their ace back in august has got to feel good He was dominant on Friday. He looked like he was missing his spots a little bit early in the game and kind of getting away with a little bit. But then once the second, third innings rolled around, he was just locked in. He was hitting his spots the way he wanted to. He was, again, he only only won six innings, struck out five, so it's not like he was mowing down everybody. But six shutout innings, five strikeouts. That's a very, very welcoming start in his first start back from the injured list. Only threw 81 pitches, so you got to think when he makes his um, his next start that he's going to be ready to go. He's going to be ready to go. He's going to be just no, no limitation, full, 100%, full send, ready to rock and roll, and I'm very excited to see that from Jack Flaherty because then even on, on his short lease of 81 pitches, he was dominant. Only gave up the five hits, and that was the only hits the Cardinals gave up, uh, or he gave up two hits. Um, TJ McFarlane gave up three, but... 30 pitch, six shutout innings, and then McFarlane, Gallegos, and Helsley made sure those six runs with the Colonel offense stuck. 
the, when this team pitches, they win. They pitched all weekend. They pitched on Friday with Flaherty. Then Lester and Hap both turned in solid performances behind Flaherty as well. But I can't say enough positive things about Jack Flaherty. He went out there, competed. He had the opportunity to prove something, that he was ready to go, that he is this competitor that he claims to be. And he he showed us all that that he is that guy, that, that he is 100% uh, the ace of the staff. And it was, it was glorious to watch. Move on to Saturday, like I mentioned, John Lester making his debut in the Victory Blues. He didn't quite have a no-hitter in his first Major League start, but he sure did impress um, as, as he did go five and two thirds of an inning, he gave up, uh, excuse me, j- just the one earned run, seven hits, two walks, two strikeouts. I think he really would have liked to finish that sixth inning, obviously, but anything f- five plus innings from John Lester and J.A. Happ have to be counted as successes. And then after John Lester exited, uh, Andrew Miller did not look extremely sharp, but Helsley, Garcia, and Cabrera did look extremely sharp. Pitching wonderfully. Nolan Arenado had another home run. I forgot to mention on Friday's game that Nolan and Tyler went back to back. I guess that was because I was thinking I was waiting to mention it about it on Sunday. And then I forgot that it happened twice. I was watching the game on Friday with my grandparents and I was thinking, man, it'd be nice. I literally said to my grandfather, it'd be nice if O'Neill went back to back here. Boom. Center field bomb. It was an incredible moment. And he did it again almost at the exact same spot on Sunday when Tyler O'Neill hit his uh, home run that went back-to-back with uh, Arenado after a laser shot. That's a pretty good 3-4 combo, and Arenado and Tyler O'Neill are hitting absolute missiles. J.A. Hat pitched yesterday, five and two-thirds, five hits, two walks, two strikeouts, and then the bullpen made it stick. Luis Garcia looked solid. Justin Miller gave up Salvador Perez's 30th home run, but T.J. McFarlane closed it out with a scoreless ninth inning. This was a wonderful way to close out the I-70 series. Cardinals go 5-1 uh, and one against the Kansas City Royals in the six games they played, losing just one game last Sunday. But they really probably could have or should have won. And nevertheless, it, it came down to just things didn't bounce the Cardinals' way. But hey, Cardinals go 5-1 and one against the Royals, win the I-70 series, sweep the, the I-70 series at Kauffman Stadium. And now they have all the momentum going into the Milwaukee series. So that was a that was a brief recap. I understand I'm not trying to brush past the Cardinals' success. I'm not trying to not give the Cardinals credit. They had they played wonderful baseball this weekend. They have been playing wonderful baseball for a week and a half, two weeks now. But as you know, as we start to close out the show, it really comes down to you know I, I'm not trying to take the pessimistic view, but I am going to be a little bit of a realist and say, okay, what can you do against Milwaukee? Because the Brewers are a playoff team. They're going to have their three aces going against St. Louis Cardinals this week. Tuesday's match, both Tuesday and Wednesday, are going to be fun pitching matchups. Tuesday, it is Corbin Burns versus Adam Wainwright. And then Wednesday, it is Jack Flaherty taking the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals and uh, Freddie Peralta for the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, Brandon Woodruff takes the mound Wednesday for, or uh, Thursday, excuse me, for Milwaukee, TBA for... St. Louis Cardinals. It's going to be fun. Runs are going to runs. You, you would think anyway, guys are going to be hard to come by for both these teams this week. Both teams have an off day today, and you, so the bullpen should be rested to go. Milwaukee has an exceptional bullpen. Cardinal bullpen has been pitching well as of late. It's going to be a fun series, and if the Cardinals can come out of it with a series win, then you feel really confident about what the Cardinals can do going into a weaker schedule again with Pittsburgh, Detroit, Pittsburgh, and then a strong September September schedule. But it, it, it starts this week. Cardinals have got to get a, a series win, in my opinion, against the Milwaukee Brewers to really kind of show the doubters or the, the haters, hey, Cardinals are here to play. So the big question is, are the playoffs a reality? And my answer is, we're going to know at the end of this Brewers series. The Cardinals are competitive, and they can – even if they no, if the Cardinals take two out of three, stay competitive in this series, then the playoffs could be a reality. I'm not saying a series win guarantees the playoffs. I am saying a series win makes them a little bit more serious as the Cardinals push for a playoff spot. It's going to be fun. 
Be sure to come back and tune in to tomorrow's show. I'll be talking about the Brewers series, breaking down the pitching matchups, seeing what we can expect from that three-game set. So be sure to come back on Tuesday, whether you are listening on YouTube or watching on YouTube, listening on uh, your favorite podcasting app, whatever you do. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at LJ Fastball. That's where most of the coverage comes in. You can also follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Cardinals. Uh, email the show anytime at lockedoncards at gmail.com. And of course, you can be sure to subscribe, hit the notifications on your favorite podcasting platform and the YouTube channel as well. Now that you've listened to Locked On Cardinals, head over to Locked On Bets to win yourself some money. And uh, be sure to tune back in tomorrow for more Cardinals content as I'm previewing the Brewers series, and it should be a fun series indeed. So until I talk to you tomorrow, be sure to stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic day.